In today's video, we're gonna talk about seven fatal gunfight mistakes that we all make in the DMZ. And I'm gonna show you examples of good moments I have doing these things and what's going on inside my mind when trying to execute these tactics correctly. The first thing we're gonna talk about today is timing. Now, this could be ultimately a couple different things. And one that isn't shown necessarily at the beginning of this video is trigger discipline. Trigger discipline is basically just because you see the enemy in your sights and can get maybe a couple bullets on them does not necessarily mean that you should shoot them at that moment. Sometimes it's better to hold off your shots and then be able to push a little bit closer so that you can make sure you get a guaranteed down and full. That's something I just want you guys to be thinking about over the next couple clips. But when I'm specifically talking about timing in this clip, it means utilizing what you have in order to push people correctly. Now, more specifically, these guys are sniping me all the way across the water and it's four versus one sniping. And if I tried to fly right at them, I'm going to fail for sure. However, I used a kill streak in order to clear the top of the building so that I could fly over when they aren't looking. Sometimes for you guys, that might be in a 3v3 gunfight and you're trying to push them so you can kill them, but they're sniping you and you have no cover. If you can get a single down, it's what's called an entry knock. You're able to then change your position so that they won't be able to expect you pushing or changing positions and you now have the upper hand in that fight one thing i don't see enough you guys doing is when you get a knock you don't act on that knock you're just like oh i got a knock and that's it those are opportunities to take advantage of because they're going to be discombobulated whether it's a 3v2 now or it's a 3v3 but they're all panicking now because somebody got knocked yo george hills that means a lot bro i appreciate it a ton And they probably just knew. All right, this is what we're gonna do. Honestly, this fight sounds horrible. Probably just three guys just standing there, right? Yeah, uh, dude, I don't. I'm not gonna snipe them, dude. You know what I could do? Here we go. Requesting fire mission, target mark. Solid copy. Order strike underway. I got one sighted here. There's a whole different team rolling in here, too. There's a whole different team rolling in here. Just flew in right there. Ultra One actual. High winds are increasing in the AO. Move to Somebody an extra point before reading. Yeah. Oh, right next to us, right next to us, right next to us. Right here at the corner. Hey, what the fuck just happened? That's correct. There's a different guy or team that flew in. I need to be careful. That's him. Let's go up and see. Ultra One, there's a platoon of operators in your vicinity. Stay alert. Recon drone offline. Engaging those operators, mark you as a target. The enemy squad is tracking your location now. Now, our second thing that we're going to talk about today is kind of like game sense, but more specifically reading of the enemy. In this clip, I'm facing off an entire platoon that's in a car in whom I'm trying to snipe and get them to come push me, honestly. And you'll see right when they push me, it seems like they're going to stack and be together, which makes it almost impossible for one guy to win against three. So instead of sitting and playing defensively, I actually drop down and play offensively, getting an entry knock. And now there's it's a 2v1 
one and the other two are panicking and the third guy he gets a couple shots at me and just like everyone more or less should he pushes me and tries to follow so i use knowing that he's gonna follow me to my advantage to catch him off guard and at the end of the fight you'll see a little bit of trigger discipline Enemy visual. yo can i ask a question tweezer yeah are you going through coach or are you coaching glitching i'm glitching out can i ask why yeah yeah hold on i'll stop out so i uh, can't do it yeah so um i have my other two characters i had nothing on and so i usually don't run solo because i'm not that good so i would pick up the extra vest and the extra backpack so i can take it to my other character but do you think it's a little unfair yeah, I think probably so in like the grand scheme of things, but because I'm like a, you know, dad in my 40s, I don't get to play too often. I'm not taking it that seriously, but I get what you're coming from. Make sense? Oh my god, he jumped off on me! All of them advised, tell us when you will march your target. Oh, nice! What the heck? Reinforcements incoming. <laughs> Yeah, don't get too close to him, we've got a knife, he's good with it. Marking enemy. Oh shit, on me, on me, on me. God damn it, that was my fault. Now this next thing we're going to talk about is something that a lot of players don't know it's a thing called peeker's advantage a mistake that a lot of you guys make and this guy in this clip will make is he knows where i'm at but he's not aggressive enough to challenge me which means i'm the one who gets to dictate the challenge and i'm the one who gets to dictate when the first shot's fired because of that i'm at an advantage because it takes time for data and memory to be transferred all the way over in the internet to a server and then back and for me to react however in this fight i don't have to react at all because because i'm the one initiating the gunfight i understand a lot of you guys want to play tactical and stealthy and for sometimes that works especially when you got a one-shot shotgun because you can just make up for the time however if you're using an ar you need to try to be the one playing aggressive or at least having an idea of what's going to happen so that you can be the aggressor or at least be in a very good defensive position unlike this guy dude yeah he's gotta be cheap now this next clip is actually taken from the same fight you just watched just the other players on his team as it was a platoon and we all know the stairs at the top of high rise that goes to the platform above one thing that i see players do way too often is they actually push all the way up those stairs and then try to start shooting meanwhile that does no good for you at all you want to try to use head glitches basically what that means is only letting some of your body show so that you can can have an advantage and have a smaller target against other players they're blind again we should go together yeah he's cracked he's coming up top he's one shot ah oh, no now for our fourth topic, the clip you'll see is a little comical, but the point still stands. It's the usage of your tactical equipment, whether you run smokes or stuns, those are really the only two things you should be running on the DMZ. You need to use them to your advantage. The most efficient person I've seen at this is Dylan. The dude will carry like six smokes and always be able to use and reload them to be able to keep the enemies on their feet of not knowing where he is and he knows where they are. Oh, 
I should have stuns. In this next clip, you'll actually see me use my smokes to an advantage in this fight, but the smokes isn't the point or, or the topic of conversation that I want to have in this fight. Basically, the topic I want to talk about is about over committing. And what that means is putting yourself in a position where three guys might be able to see you at the same time and be able to gun you. You wanna put yourself in a position that you can either evade or fight at the right times, but only do it when it's in a favorable position. Sometimes when I overcommit, it puts me in a place where two guys see me and now I'm in a two in one fight and it's almost impossible to outgun two people at once. But not over committing helps a ton when pushing because then you're able to isolate players one-on-one. -on -one. This is an entire platoon that I fight, but yet I'm able to win four different 1v1s because I isolate each player themselves. Now, is that guaranteed every single time? No, of course not. However, most teams in the DMZ aren't stacking on top of each other. They're not coordinated enough. So use that to your advantage if you're running alone. Oh, he's right here. Yeah. He has a on your head. Engaging your discretion. On me, on me, on me, on me, on me. Oh my god. Running around back right now. Guys down. Running around the back side of the building. Yep, there he goes. There Good he goes. shit. Good shit. One's upstairs. Upstairs. Fuck. Bro, bird watch your reaction. Insane. What the fuck? Now, the last thing that we need to talk about is this concept called centering. It is where the middle dot of your screen is where basically you would maybe expect players to be. And in this entire fight, two things I want you to notice. One, where is my center dot the vast majority of my times, especially when I'm checking through doors and stairways and stuff like that? Is it looking down? Is it looking up? Is it looking at the wall? Or is it looking kind of in the direction of where players could 
potentially be. And then the second thing, because of where my centering is, when I do engage with players, look and see how far of a distance my middle dot has to go in order to engage that player. Because of that, I have a significant advantage over other players simply because I don't have to have my gun move nearly as much. Now, if you guys want more breakdowns like this or tips and tricks, let me know down in the comments also. And make sure you like the video because these videos do take a little bit more effort. And it just encourages me to see if this video had a thousand likes to, hey, Chris, do this again. So make sure you're subbed and I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, it's bird watcher. Oh no, this is crossing <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, we took. Yeah, we took. We took. Yeah. Yo, cross, cross. Listen, bro. Well, we can talk about it, right? We don't need to talk about nothing. No. <laughs> no, it's cross. Come on. Come on, cross. Nah, he's running away. He just killed me. Uh, he's running towards. He's going back to. Uh, yeah, this. Ultra one, be advised, winds are picking up. Move to an extraction point. I'm throwing. I'm literally throwing. No, I'm lagging. Stop. Please stop. Not now. Advanced UAV is being a fuel. RTP okay. at this time. This is really unfortunate, bro. Alright, kinda just through there. Ultra One, there's a platoon of operators in your vicinity. Stay alert. Ooh, this is a different team? Okay, this is a completely different squad. But it's not. Oh, it's Clayton. He caught me, Clayton. <laughs> Where was that at? Pretty sure there's one more. <laughs> I saw you jump.
one, actual. Radiation is spreading through the area. Moving to an extract point. Ultra one, be advised. A squad of operators is near your location. Shit. Thank you. 